I don't know whether you heard that thunder, but it, it does add some dramatic gravitas to this video. <laughs> Command and Colors Samurai Battles from GMT Games, a game that I could not have been more excited about when I first saw that there was going to be a Command and Colors game, a series that I've been really hoping and wanting to get into at some point in my life, but I just didn't know how I was going to actually do that because the person that I normally play games with wasn't interested really in the themes already covered Napoleonic ancients but he does like Japan feudal Japan so I was like insta buy for me personally sight unseen I didn't even really need to know much about it so that's why I've got this game what is this game well it's the latest in the command and colors series and the command and colors series is really a system of games that has a lot of games in it i mean more than 10 a bunch i mean red alert is in it battle cry battle law there's an americans there's a civil war one there's a memoir 44 a lot of games there's a lot of games different games that use the same engine under the hood of the game with different chassis over the top that do a bunch of different things and in this game what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing one of 40 different scenarios though i suppose infinite scenarios really because you can just set your own scenario up that's absolutely not a problem at all and you're going to be doing these feudal samurai driven battles and it is all kind of about the samurai those strong powerful leaders and warriors that are going to punch through the lines or going to come in at the end of the day and save the mission for you take the objective that you need taken kill that dude over there who's done so much damage to you that you just need him dead even if it doesn't actually help you it's all about the samurai and whether that's thematic or not it is the driving force of the game on your turn you're going to be playing uh, a tactics card, a command card, and doing a thing. And that's normally going to be attacking with units on the left, in the middle, or on the right. And doing objectives, moving your troops forward, then engaging in battles. And battles are dice, fest, chucker, read nonsense fun. You're going to be chucking a... Oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. That wasn't even so bad it was good. Let's move on. You're going to be throwing a bunch of dice and trying to get results to fight and win and take units out so you can progress forward with whatever the objective of your scenario is. The scenarios are different. They progress and also th there's a helpful way that the they start off much more simple as like training missions and then kind of ramp up and you'll only be using a few different types of units at the start and then later on you'll be using a bunch of different types of units and there's loads of different types of units and the units are of different scales depending on what the scenario is sometimes there are a couple people sometimes there are a bunch of people with the same unit so that's fun and you're doing objectives the thing where this is different to other command and colors games specifically and the thing that i think is the selling point of command and color samurai battles other than it being the samurai battle song which was the selling point to me is that there are these honor and fortune tokens and dragon cards because this is a block war game often the fog of war is created by not knowing what your opponent's pieces are until you are having to deal with those pieces until the battle has engaged there is no fog of war in this game because the the blocks are double sided, you can see what's coming for you. Now, the interesting thing there is that the dragon cards themselves are the fog of war. So you're gonna get these this this uh this currency, this honor and fortune currency through the game. And you get it primarily from being brave. That's the best way to get it. You also can get some at the end of your turn. You're also going to be spending that currency to help with die rolls you're going to be spending that currency to help with retreating all that type of stuff but the cool thing to do with this currency is to spend it on these dra on these cards these dragon cards because you take the cards and then they've got a, a cost they can be zero one two or three and then you're going to be using these cards and you do not know what the you, what your opponent is going to do there's a lot of the cards I think there's 40 in the game and 
that's the fog of war because I know what this unit can do and my opponent knows what my units can do. They don't know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. And that is dictated by the look of the command cards that I've got. There is a lot of luck in this game, a lot of card draw and a lot of dice rolling. The thing is, is that you don't know what fortune cards they've got. These, these honor and fortune cards are going to do wild, swingy, wonderfully awesome things if you're doing it, horrendous things if you're not, but they're just like, wow, this is cool. And they just make the game very exhilarating and very exciting. A couple things that I do have issues with in this game are this is a lighter war game. It should be accessible to people to play. Obviously the price point is an issue for a lot of people. These games are not cheap. There is arguably an incredible amount of stuff in the box. Smaller print runs for a more niche hobby. I totally get that. That's fine. But you've got a sticker like, I don't know, like 500 stickers. It's almost as though they don't want new players to play this game. They are, they've made this game for veterans of the Crown and Colour series, for people who already know they like it, and they haven't given almost any thought at all to helping new players get into this system. And that is such a shame, because this would be a really great entryway into that system, but something like you sticker in for literally hours and hours of stickering up these, these blocks, that is an entry point that a lot of people just aren't going to be willing to make and yes you can say well they're lazy fine you could I suppose you could say that but if I don't know I'm gonna like something and you've already got to spend four hours on something five hours on something I found it frustrating I understand it's the logistics of making a game like this but it was slightly frustrating and the scenario book is fantastic. It tells you what you need to do, to how to set up, and there's lots of different things in the setting up of stuff. There's hills and terrain and all that kind of stuff and these, on these tiles, wonderful. But the rule book itself, again, is designed for people who have already played Command & Colors games. And I just don't know whether, without watching like video rules, like playthroughs and stuff, I don't know whether I can say that this is the entryway into this system that you should be using. I'm going to tell someone who's never played a game like this before to pick up Memoir 44 and see if they enjoy that style of game first. And then once they do, because it's ace, they might then go and pick this up. But I really do like Command & Colour Samurai Battles. It's everything I wanted so super specifically for me to play a Command & Colours game like this. It just couldn't be more tailor-made for me and the person, my brother, who I normally would play this game with if this is the entryway. And it's so fun because you're gonna have things where, you know, the samurai are super powerful and you've got the rest of like these gunners in the back and they're not doing a lot, but you know, they could take up a few hits, <laughs> you know? Are you gonna lead those troops into the slaughter and then have your samurai come in the background and save the day? Or are you gonna try and sneak attack with your samurais and use this really cool dragon card and kind of push through the line and never know what's happening and to get all the other troops to kind of come with you? And the cool thing is, is that you can inspire troops, you can get troops to be stronger, and you can really, you can stop retreats if you can support units. It feels very thematic. It feels very, oh, this it could be a really good representation of what it's like. The reference sheet in the game, it comes with a big reference chart because there are, while there might not be a lot of units in each battle, there are a lot of units overall and there's reference sheets in it and they're very useful. It's going to tell you if there's like strength dice, how many dice things are going to roll, how many hexes they can move, who they can attack and how attacks work and all that kind of stuff. So the references for that, super useful. And I think that's fairly crucial. I just wish, I really truly wish the rule book was just slightly more accessible for people. And even if that was just a formatting thing, it could have just made things slightly easier for people. If you like the theme and you like war games, and you haven't already just bought this, <laughs> I suppose, then I absolutely think you should. Is this the entryway into this system that I was kind of hoping it would be helping out with? I'm not so sure it is, but if you've got some tenacity and some perseverance and a willingness to learn, and you're gonna use a few online resources as well, pick this game up. I don't think you'll be disappointed because there's 40 scenarios. That's 40 games of this game. 
I don't think I can say that about any other game I own. And you kind of get into the massively long campaign games at that point. It's not a campaign game, obviously. The scenarios are episodic. They're not, they're not going to move on from one to another. But there's a lot of game in this box. Physically and figuratively. And I think it's something you can really dig your teeth into. Get through the whole thing and fight out the whole scenario there's so much history in the box in a rule book i think it's a great product i just wish there was a couple things that could have helped it be a great product for more people so i really like this i think if you like it you should pick it up it's wonderful and i'm very very happy to have it it's definitely staying in my collection i'm really excited to play a lot more samurai battles and i hope this has uh, helped you in some way if it has subscribe to the channel i appreciate that a lot like the video i guess cares i mean do but you know no one enjoys hearing it oh leave a comment and let me know what you think and i'll see you next time bye